This week on the podcast, we are joined by Canadian rock royalty. His name is Ian Thornley, and he's with the band Big Wreck. Welcome back to the Rockman Power Hour, a podcast where we talk to the most interesting people in the world of pop culture, music, movies, and everything in between. I'm joined by my co-host, Ryan Stick. Ryan, how are you, friend? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm, I am I am wonderful today. Um, I'm excited because we're joined by uh, Ian Thornley. Ian, somebody whose uh, career I've been following forever. I've had a chance to talk with him uh, on several occasions when I was working in radio. I even had lunch with him once. We talk, we're going to talk about that in the interview briefly. But um, he's just a nice guy, and, uh, and he gets it. Um, and I didn't realize how dedicated he was to his guitar playing until we did this actual interview, and his Zoom camera opened up, and I saw how dedicated he was. And you're going to see when we get to that. But uh, before we go too far... Let's take a minute and thank our title sponsor, Heartbeat Hot Sauce. They are the heartbeat of the Rockman Power Hour. As you can see right behind Ryan, he's got a bunch of hot sauce. And uh, I decided to, I don't know if you have this one in your fridge. Let me just check. You do not. So I decided to bring this one out. This is the In Flames Heartbeat mm. Hot Sauce. Um, this is a really, really good one. It is quite spicy. It, ta- it falls on the hot meter. I put this on my eggs this morning because I, it, this is a daily ritual for me when I do make, cause I'm the kind of guy, man, I make the same shit every day. Almost. I have my eggs. I like to make an omelet and I love to, uh, to throw heartbeat on there. So this is the in flames collab that they did with the band. It is called touch of red. I believe my eyes, let me, let me put my glasses on. Hang on. Let me just make sure it is called touch of red. I'll put on my glasses too. And out of solidarity. Oh, Thank captain. you, Ryan. Oh, Captain, my captain. My captain. Touch of red. There you go. So great hot sauce. I This is my second bottle that I've gone through of, of this one. And uh, yeah, really, really enjoying these guys. I, w- I will say I'm a little let down based on many of the fire puns they could have used. <laughs> but I'm not let down by the taste. No, the taste is incredible. So definitely check out Heartbeat Hot Sauce, the heartbeat of the Rock and Power Hour. Uh, and thank you to our sponsors, Studio House Designs. Dude. I was, Ryan, I love that. I was walking around um, at Winnipeg, excuse me, I was walking around at uh, Ottawa Comic Con with, um, with I can't remember, oh, I had the Exorcist shirt on. I got so many compliments, man. Yeah. Every time I have one of those shirts on, it is like compliment heaven. Yeah. I wish I would have known about Heartbeat, excuse me, I wish I would have known about Studio House Designs when I was single. Mm. Because the amount of doors that get opened for conversation when you're wearing one of these shirts, not, I mean, I did good. I'm really happy with yeah. my lot in life. Like you being know. a good looking lead singer of a band and all, I'm sure you did okay, but it wouldn't no, have no, I'm talking about now. Like I'm happy where I landed. Would, yeah. <laughs> wouldn't have hurt to up your t-shirt game, right? Yeah, you know, let's mm. I, we could go in so many directions with this. Let's just say Studio House Designs t-shirts are great to make friends. There you go. Because they like really that. do. Yeah. They do. They help you make friends. What, I actually made friends with a guy. Guy yeah. was wearing an exorcist shirt, but it was a long sleeve purple tie dye. And I was like, where did you get that? And he's like, I go, that's a studio house designs design. Mm. I took a picture and I sent it to Cody. And I'm like, is this a bootleg? He's like, no, I did tie dyes, long sleeve tie dyes of that shirt years ago. I was like, wow, I met a guy. So we were instantly friends. Guy actually added me on Instagram and I started following the podcast. So there you go. Awesome. So thank you. One more listener. Thanks to studio house. Yeah. Uh, studio house designs is all, we actually bring this up later on. Actually the T the whole t-shirt new friend uh experience when you go into a party but you know i used to do that with bands but every now and then i just get so bummed out (laughs) because with bands it's like someone be wearing a misfit shirt i'm like oh who's your favorite singer dan sicker graves and my my answer was always i like them both but the person would look at me kind of with with a deer in the headlights expression because the words danzig nor graves bears no meaning to this skull is cool so yeah. yeah. Anyway, That's more what, on that later. Yeah. Well, we did. And we, you know, it's funny. We've talked mm. about that on this show before. Um, we went at, in length about that with um, with Alex from uh, from Cannibal Corpse. That's true. About how these bands names become brands, and uh, and it's yeah. a strange thing. And um, yes, you brought that up with Ian when we chatted with him. Um, mm. Listen, 
Ian Thornley, Ryan, very respected Canadian musician, um, very respected uh, guitar player, singer, and uh, all around nice guy. Very intensely committed to playing guitar. Yes. And we see that when we get on this Zoom with him. Yeah. Um, well, without further ado, we're, we keep foreshadowing this I know, uh, talk. But it, it, dude, we got to tease, man. Keep some listening. Uh, uh, there that's you go. They, that's what they taught me. TSL, time spent listening. They say, just keep teasing. <laughs> keep teasing. So I'm teasing to it. But they All can right, fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's jump into our interview with Ian Thornley from Big Rec. All right. Uh, really, really, Ian, how you doing, man? Good, man. Good to see you. So do you remember me? We had lunch together in Montreal. Yeah, yeah of course. At Shom. So I don't work at Shom anymore. Okay. Um, I was there for almost 14 years, but uh, but I've been doing this podcast for about two and a half years with my friend Ryan. And um, this podcast, we, we talk to the most interesting people in the world of pop culture and music. And uh, when I had the opportunity to chat with you, um, I was very excited about it because you are a very interesting person when it comes to <laughs> not, o- not, only Can- <laughs> not only Canadian music, but music in general. Um, so thanks for, for, uh, for agreeing to come on today and chat with us a little bit. Um, do you, have a, you actually have a guitar in your hand right now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm always, I'm kind of, um, yeah, if I, if I don't have other stuff on the go even sometimes when i do have other shit on the go i I still i have to i'm at the point now where um i have to i have to play every day really that's amazing you know it's crazy when you think i you know i i I played music for a a good portion of my life i did i did the thing you know i went and i toured put out records um did all that stuff but i never felt like when i transferred you know, when I transferred into another area and like went into radio and then went into podcasting, I never felt like I needed to sing every day, but there's some people that just like, you, you just said it, I need to play every day. That, that really shows that you're, you're a real, you're the real deal. Well, I, yeah, I don't, I, I mean, there's different, different reasons for it, but, uh, you know, there's a, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, it's sort of my hobby. It's my obsession and, and specifically guitar. Like if I'm, not even in a sort of musical frame of mind and you know um if i've just written a bunch like like the way i am now i we just finished um 17 or 18 recordings and and just i don't know how many months of writing and, and that process i'm um, even in, within that i'm i'm constantly checking in on my hands and making sure that that's going and i think vocally that that i don't sort of check in on it as often um but i do uh, we got a tour coming up, so I, I'll start stretching things out, and you right. know, it's sort of and that's my job, right? I, I look at it that way, but I also, if you can see the desk here, there's about 26 different pickups that I've been, you know, putting in and out of a Les Paul because I'm like, yeah, it's good, but it's not quite. Not, oh man, it's not one of these. It's not quite where a sewer, you know, speaks to me. So I, I, I yeah, it's it's sort of it's all all encompassing, and uh, you know, we've I've been. The last couple of weeks have been I've, I've had COVID and COVID's bounced around the house and now my son uh, he has pneumonia so that you know oh man uh, but he's fine and you know kids um, if you catch it early enough it's just you know, we have him on these inhalers and steroids and all the stuff that he see he's great he's in great shape but even with all that I'm still sort of like okay well he seems fine so I better you know I got I got I got I got gotta this. gotta move the hands <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was a, I was who was I telling about yesterday or even said, no, yeah, it was yesterday. I was talking to Chris, um, who just got recently got married. Chris Cadell is the other guitar player. In the mm. band. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I went, I went a couple of weeks. He got married and, you know, all the run up to that. And then, and then went to, went, went to Rome for a bit with the wife. And, and he's like, I didn't touch a guitar. And you do, it does give you a different perspective on it when you come at it with, you know, I mean, your hands don't do the same thing. But I was reminded as we were talking about that, I was reminded of a great Django. I think it was Django and it was his quote. And he said, after if I don't play for one day, I can I notice it. If it's two days, then the other people in the band will notice. And if it's three days, then the audience notices. Oh wow. And mm-hmm. I, I I honestly I um I struggled to remember the last time I went more than two days. Um if we're on vacation or, you know, the family and everything, I always bring the guitar with me. I, I and as I've gotten older, you know, getting back 
like one day off, I, I notice it, you know, yeah. like I'll, I'll have a certain thing down. And if I take a day off, it's just one of those things that requires a lot of hope. Probably the reason why you're you 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 are where you are and you're respected the way you are because like let's face it I mean I'm, and I'm not blowing smoke I mean you're respected as a vocalist you're respected as a guitar player um, also as a songwriter but I mean as a guitar player dude you know you can shred and you can sing like a motherfucker so <laughs> I, do, I put in I put in the work you know? yeah well that's it and I can see it now with you with you having the guitar on your lap and 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 I love that insight of uh, of not being you know the, the the one day and then the two days and the three yeah. days it's great. Yeah, it depends on how dialed in you are with um, with what you're doing. And I'm pretty dialed in with how my hands are feeling and how my throat's all. I just sort of physically, yeah. And I, I, probably a lot of musicians and guys, gals who play in bands that you know that, that are doing way better than we are, who just don't give a shit, and and that's fine too, you know. Yeah, sure. Because it, it, you know, it's just a different uh, a different focus, and I you know I tend to be a bit nerdy about these things. <laughs> I guess there's a big difference between people who just, you know, kind of like their high bar is like kind of awesomely awful. And, and then and then they can kind of just jump in back in and out whenever they feel like it. And you don't see like the damage that's been done by the neglect of their skill. But it seems like as a guitar player and a singer, um, it's at a very high bar. I was taking a walk before and I went to the food court. I was getting some food and I was uh thinking i'm like right big rack man such awesome songs do 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 and i'm like thinking oh my god i'm singing his guitar part there's sure. a whole bunch of stuff in that song i could be singing with my vel- melody wise it's a it's a motherfucker it's a great song but at the same time you have this like timeless quality about your 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 riffs and your and your guitar riffs and that and that's another skill set that i don't think is celebrated enough especially with your band considering you know your vocal your vocal uh earworms are amazing but your guitar ones are as well uh, was that always a priority um yeah where where you, i think where you can where you can find them when you're lucky enough to find a something like that a hook or, or a part that you know and usually those kind of things like i'd rather focus on something like that or trying to find something like that than i would um playing a million miles a minute you know i did because that, because like you said that you have the opportunity to have something that might stick with people beyond um you know a 30 second instagram clip or something it was like holy fuck that guy's fast it doesn't <laughs> really matter you're on to the next video or the next clip um but if you you know i i would love to have more of those riffs they tend to just fall in your lap you know another reason that I, i've always just kind of adhered to like the, the those things have only really fallen in your lap when you're when you have an instrument in your hands and and you know so the more often i can have one i just might get lucky enough and um you know a melody or, or something will, will fall out of the sky and uh yeah i think some people are luckier than others when it comes to that and i i still i don't know what the uh what the recipe is or what the trick is like i can remember where i was when when that riff in particular popped into my head and, or popped out of my hands really uh, and it was just like oh and you know it and you hear it before it like as it's happening and before it finishes happening you know what's gonna you know what i'm saying it kind of it reveals itself to you and you're just like oh man it was there the whole time and I, you know the good ones to me are, are the ones that sound like they've been there before you and they'll be there after you, you know? yeah that's it's so well put because you you know when you do write music and something connects it does feel like it's it's almost like it's always been there but you just discovered it. it's almost like you're nana jones and you're not an archaeological you know you're yeah. on a archaeological dig and you're like ah the grail it's always been here but i found yeah. it and mm-hmm. it, it is an incredible feeling yeah that's the juice right that's kind of what keeps keeps me going yeah yeah it, it um you you also have this knack for um you know ryan mentioned melodies you also have a, a, a knack for for writing songs that do quite well at radio um being someone that you know worked at a, a major rock station for for the better part of almost 14 years big rack was part of the furniture if you will um when when a big rack song came to radio it, it it you know you're you're like well there's a good chance we're going to be playing this but what i liked about you is you always took the time to to go be behind the music as well um and i'll never forget our music director was like ian thornley's coming to montreal would you join us for for lunch because 
I, I kind of feel weird. Like I'm, you know, like you're a musician and you know, like you play the music and I'm, I'm the music director, but like, can you come along with us? And, and I'll never forget, like I was, I was watching you at lunch and you're like, man, this guy's out here. Like he know he gets the fact that he's not just a musician. He gets the fact that he has to go and do the other part of it. And, and at this point, I mean, this is only a few years ago, you're still willing to do it, you know, where some people would be like, I'm not fucking doing that, but you did it. I, I, uh, I've never really minded it, to be honest. And I, I know I, I don't even know how I got a reputation as being a bit of a, a bit uh, prickly or, or you know, curmudgeonly. <laughs> but I, I don't, I really don't mind having it. I mean, sometimes you get into conversations or, or an interview where it's just, all right, it's over before it began because, <laughs> yeah. you know, I think, and you know what I mean. It's just, of course. you know, of course. but I, I, you know, I, I always love it. I mean, having a conversation about music is kind of, you know, that's that's basically what we're talking about on the bus. It's what we do, and and of course, I do. Somebody would be humbled and, and flattered if we want to talk about my music or our music. That's uh, you know, and you get to sort of hear what somebody else thought of it, or you know, and it is a uh, yeah, it, it's great, especially when somebody knows what they're talking about, or is at least done the due diligence of doing a bit of research and um you know maybe having an interesting question here here or there yeah um but yeah and i you know sometimes as you know on the road you get tired and a bit a bit punchy and a bit crunchy and you didn't really have a great sleep and because the, the roads were terrible or whatever it was and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know maybe your voice is a little uh, a little shredded from the night before so it might come across if you're doing a phone interview that uh that you don't give a shit or you'd rather be somewhere else. And certainly sometimes that might be the case. But for the most part, I I, I still enjoy that shit. You know, I, I like going into radio stations and, and, you know, and shooting the breeze and, because for the most part, you know, everybody's kind of got into it for the same reasons, even if they have no idea who we are. You know, yeah. like we're somewhere in the States and they're like, oh, go into a station. Like, I, I, I love that because it's like, Generally speaking, these people got into it because either A, they were involved in music in some way, or B, they're just huge fans of music. And it, yeah, and that's a, that's what I am. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. You, usually, I, you know, I'm rubbing elbows with a lot of kindred spirits out there. And, I, you know, and especially if you're trapped on a metal tube with 10 other dudes for <laughs> months on end, it, it, it's nice to get some fresh meat, you know? <laughs> I don't think we uh, I don't think people who aren't involved in music enough realize like the most fun you can provide for anybody like they get to see the band they get to see the show the lights everything they see like at the pinnacle of what everything was prepared for but they don't see the other 11 hours in the day yeah <laughs> and what and what and what it takes to put that show on um I I got I got to ask you and this might be a little bit more of a creative way of asking somebody this getting this information out of somebody but i know that whenever when i was a teenager whenever i go to a party before the internet was you know widely spread and all these bands were widely known if i saw a particular t-shirt of a band i knew who my best friend was at that party that night uh what t-shirt would you if you were at a party and you saw said shirt did you say oh i gotta talk to this person um that's a tough one because it's a it's a long time ago that i was in high school <laughs> Um, but it's pretty much anything that I was into, you know, and, and, and anything, if I would see a t-shirt, because at the time, like we're talking late eighties into the early nineties, I think 90, 91 was my first year at college. So I like could, if, if somebody was wearing an Abbott t-shirt or, or <laughs> a super Tramp t-shirt, yeah. um, like stuff that I really dug, but wouldn't <laughs> really tell the rest of the basketball team <laughs> that I loved it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, but if I saw something like that, you know, I, I might be inclined to. I'm not the I'm not the guy who walks over to people and says, "Hey, how you doing?" You know, I'm not a. I'm a little more uh, reserved than that. Let's call it. Um, but yeah, you know, and if somebody was wearing a Springsteen shirt or a Cobra shirt or or you know, just all all the stuff that because there was a lot of people that started to wear Zeppelin tees and Pink Floyd and the Who, and it sort of became. Uh, it, it sort of started to become a thing in, in sort of my later teens. I started seeing more and more of it. You'd see some dude with like a swan song tattoo. And I'd be like, dude, he doesn't even know what that is. You know, so, so tattoo. And I'm like, you don't know what that is. You don't know what that 
represents. Like I've been at it for years, you know. <laughs> I've been I know set fan for years, but but uh, you know, so and then nowadays I think you know you see people with Metallica and Slayer T-shirts. Like oh, there's, I guess it became a thing a couple of years back where I don't know if it was a, a Kardashian or somebody was wearing a, you know, some sort of old skater metal kind of T-shirt. And, and was just getting lambasted online because they <laughs> clearly would not be big fans of whatever T-shirt it was they were wearing. So I, I, I don't really know. It's not. It's never. Re- I don't really look at people's T-shirts first. But I know what you mean. There is a certain tribalism to. Mm. Oh, that guy's that guy's down. That guy's cool. yeah, yeah. Well, it's yeah. it's these things that we recognize, and and you know, um, Ryan and I are, are really involved with a bunch of comic cons in Canada, you know, um, okay. and it's kind of the same thing. Like you'll, you'll see someone that, that will be into something you're into and it could be something really deep. And and, and now with Marvel, I mean, you know, there was a time when I'm 52 r- comic books. If you told people when you were growing up in my generation that you liked comic books, you were a fucking nerd. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And it was like, you know, th- th- but now, man, like, you know, we've kind of taken over the world and it's fun. But um, but it's nice when you when you're able to connect with people, and, and of course, music's the great connector. Um, it's the thing that, and as you know, I mean, you you have people that come up to you and tell you, I'm sure at every show after you know at a meet and greet or or, or outside the bus or you know before when they're, you're walking into the venue, that that song meant that to them. When a new big rec- record would come out, uh, I always take the time to listen because I always knew there was going to be stuff in there that I was going to connect to, and um, and of course you know, at radio there was a chance for me to hear the songs a lot, but I would always go deep into an album. And the last project that you put out seven, um, mm-hmm. I thought that was really interesting because it really felt like that was done in pieces. Um, and then it was kind of joined together. It was all recorded at the same time. Oh, really? Cause it felt, when, but it felt like uh, I, I, that was sort of pseudo by design. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we cut all the songs and we, I, we even mixed them at the same time. So we were, you know, I, I, I think the, I think the idea was something that I've been I've been toying around with for a couple of years now, uh, or a few years anyway. But uh, of just uh, because because like you say, going in deeper into an album, that's sort of that's my bread and butter. Mm-hmm. Personally, you know, um, like my favorite thing to do as a kid was to not just listen to the hits of off oh, a yeah. particular yeah. record. Was to what else they got. And and sometimes you're not only pleasantly surprised, but I, something would reach out of the speakers and grab me, and I would be I would become obsessed. And every once in a while, I'd I'd meet somebody else who was just and they they have that record, and I'd be like, "But have you listened to that song?" Be, right? right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then okay, now we have this bond. But <laughs> I, I, that's sort of my that's always been I, that's the shit that I like writing. You know, I kind of and I hate to admit it, but I kind of lose I lose a bit of something. The song loses its sparkle a little bit when when I hear the label or somebody say that's the single. Like, yeah, I know what you mean. I know like what you a mean. Second ago, yeah. I, that was my favorite one. Now, fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, and I hate to admit that, but it is. Yeah. Thirty I'm like, oh, they think that's the you know. But yeah, just so the idea anyway. It's a little rambling, but the the idea was that if we give people um, less information to. You know, th- th- there's no far end, deep end of the record. They're they're all just these little sort of quick statements. And I think I think with with the there's 15 songs all together. There was there was definitely stylistically we could play with things mm-hmm. so that they would hit different. You know, and we could have gone in a very different direction, uh, which is something that I think we're going to do for that seven record for when we release it as as a whole thing. Right. Um, I'd like to have it as a, the, all the like five heavy numbers and five sort of trippier numbers, or or you know, um, musoe numbers, and then five sort of more poppy and, and a little more digestible numbers. Um, have those all in their own sort of baskets. But but yeah, I mean that's kind of what we're what we're doing now as well. It's like we just did, like I said, I think it was seventeen or eighteen songs that we did. Um, we mixed six uh for the first ep and and i for the most part i think i'm getting i'm getting positive feedback on on the idea of doing eps i know there's some uh there's some diehards probably that are, that are like i want a whole album yeah and it's like mm-hmm. so do i you know and i love that i i still do it's one of my favorite things but some of my favorite songs on records past are down at the dusty end of the album and when you when you're when you're privy to the numbers 
and you get to see how many listens they have. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty surprising that mm -hmm. it's like the, what I consider to be one of the best songs I've ever written. It's been only heard 13 times the song's been out for yep. 15 years, whatever it is. It's like, holy moly, I, I really would have thought that that would have been one of those nuggets that somebody found. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just like, you know, who has the time, I guess. I, I, it, who's who's really uh, who's really paying that much attention um, the way that I used to and still do um, mm. to music? You know, it's sort of uh, in a way, in a way, it's a shame that that music has become this sort of um, just disposable sort of byproduct of something else. Um, yeah. And, 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 it, and to me, it was always the thing It was the, the primary focus is the. You know, when I was during those years, you you that was the activity. That was the. It wasn't you did this while you were doing that. It, no, it's, no, it, it's it's you know, it's. If I had my, you know, you had your Walkman or whatever, and I had my favorite earphones, and I had a fresh set of batteries, and I had Zeppelin Four. Yeah. Um, I would have it on while I was on, like, if I had an hour and fifteen on on the TTC to get from my house to my high school. And it was like that was what I look forward to. Yeah, was, for sure. The whole, down the this whole thing now that, yeah. and it's like, well, I got some time here, so I would go sit in the in the bleachers by myself and stare off into nothing, and and that you know that was the, and then get home and put something on, put the big cans on, and dime it, and, and <laughs> that was the that was the, and I don't think it's the same because uh -huh. people are still have have their earbuds in and are doing, you know, they're doing other shit while they're yeah while they're listening. on. And I think there's people are able to sort of multitask, if you will, um, yeah. perhaps a lot better than than we did back in the day. But but there are still people that will put out, you know, like I, I recently got, you know, when Jerry Cantrell put out Degradation Trip, um, I love that record. Lo got lost on a lot of people. Then he put out an expanded version, like one and two, and it's just like two hours of fucking music. But what's great is that the old heads that will listen will be hmm. rewarded. By yeah. finding stuff, you know, on side six, if you're listening to it on vinyl and you got to yeah. keep switching it and you're like, holy shit, thank yeah. you. You know, so, um, but listen, all I know is that when you do deliver music, you deliver um, and you, you, you always deliver. And, and that's, and, and, you know, you coming on here, it makes sense. You're doing an interview and you got a guitar on your lap in case you get off with us and you get inspired to write, you know, yeah. a song yeah. about these two idiot podcast guys. Yeah, so I, it, I, I haven't had a, I haven't had a, I haven't had a real good sort of session in a few days of, of just, you know, I was just playing before we got on and, and when we get off, I'll try to fit in as much as I can until the sort of the rest of the evening progresses and I'm required to do other things. But um, mm. there is a certain, there's a certain level that you want to hit, not even physically, but yes, physically. And then it's sort of in here somewhere. There's a certain level where it's like, okay, I, I touched it. Okay. I'm good. Um, and if I, if I still haven't sort of hit that, um, I'll come down after dinner and, and get to bed and all that. I'll come down and continue. Not even not even like exploring and writing interesting new things, like just doing the really mundane metronome work or, or <laughs> like the real the real uh, minutia. Well, if it that's it. And, and I think it's going to be evident when people come see you live. Uh, the tour kicks off when exactly? Yes. Yes, that's when it kicks off. <laughs> Got it. Um, honestly, I, I early November. I know that. I, I just got dates mm -hmm. for rehearsals. Okay, so so Next early year. November. Um, you're uh, be, there's a lot of things that are up in the air, right? right. But it's going to be a map. Right. But it's going to be. But I know it's going to be a huge tour. Um, yeah, yeah. And, we're doing. Uh, we're doing all of Canada, which is amazing. Um, and sort of the western part of the u.s into, into into texas i think and um yeah and then back up to canada to finish canada off so yeah it'll be a, it'll be it's going to be a long one well i i wish you nothing but continued success i hope everybody in the house stays healthy hope your hands stay healthy your voice um and thanks for taking the time and you've always been a gentleman and uh it was great just to be able to shoot the shit about music with you absolutely man thanks for having me and we'll uh we'll hopefully see you soon man absolutely You know, that's the type of thorn that I want on my side. Or in my side. There Maybe you go. Guitar in there. Uh, I like him a lot, man. I'd take oh, a God. thorn in the hand if it means I could shred like that, dude. So, you Dude. Know.
so when he, when they come to Montreal, we're going to go because cool. you've got it. You've never seen Big Wreck, and you got to go. You got to see how much this guy shreds and how good of a singer he is, and just just very very humble guy. You yeah. know, if you were to look at how many hits they've had in Canada and the oh, records they've sold, I, I, I was like remembering that. them earlier today. I was going through them. I'm like, oh yeah, that one and that. One, oh yeah, that one that exactly. One, and that one. Uh, my friend Ray, back back in the day, I was like a committed punk kid, you know, and. Yeah. As much as we all like to think how open minded we all were, it's like, no, the fuck we weren't. We were in our little <laughs> tribes. We wore our T-shirts. We all dressed and acted exactly the fucking same. We followed the rules until right. we grew up just enough to stop being morons. But there is the moron phase and the moron yes. phase lasted until I was maybe about 22. And uh, when I was about, uh, let's say, 18, 19, my buddy Ray loved Big Rack, you know, and, mm -hmm. and everybody out there. This is Ray from Vinyl Hero. Great guy. Yeah. He, nice guy, Ray. Yeah. He loved, loved, loved Stone Temple Pilots, Big Wreck. He loved Motley Crue with John Karabi. Uh, and he did not give a fuck if anybody else didn't like what he liked. He <laughs> liked it. And that, and and it's the first time I really, because Big Wreck was always around, but it was the first time I think after he talked about them so much that I say to myself, damn, this is like a, you know, I know they don't fall, they don't fall into the drawer I've put myself in musically and stylistically for the last few years. But then they're a good band. And then later on in life, I'd reflect yeah. on them. I'm like, that production was really fucking good. Yeah. Like when you hear that yeah. fucking that riff opening up and that fucking do no 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 no. I'm like, man, it's big, especially in oh, that yeah, chorus. Dude. Yeah. 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 And and the band live, who they slam. They slam. Yeah. 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 They slam. Um, I loved when he said putting on the big cans and diming it. <laughs> diming it. That expression, yeah. diming it, when you turn. You literally turn your thing to 10, 10, yeah. a dime. Like, I love that. I haven't heard that in forever. It went over diamond. my head, man. It's like hearing wrestling terminology I've never heard before, like right. faces and heels and all that. Like until I learn, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Heels. Favorite yeah. part of the foot. All right. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uh, wrestling, um, mm. just to get off subject a bit. I don't know if you've seen the trailer yet for the Iron Claw. Yes, I have. And I've been anticipating <sighs> this movie. Mm. Since they Me went too. in production and a 24, it seems like it seems they want another Oscar, but not in a sellout way, but in a, we're going to tell a great story that no one else is going to tell type of way. And, uh, I got, I got, I know a lot about the Von Erics before okay. this movie. And let me tell you, if you think there's a little bit of sadness that's teased in the trailer, you're in for a world of hurt. I have this, no, I have yeah. no idea about their story Yeah, and I'm, purposely going to stay away from hearing nice. anything to know more because I just watched the trailer and I was like, Ooh, this isn't going to end well. <laughs> no. And even with the direction, I got to say from the trailer, the way the sound design and the shot of him running into the ropes and how intense that sounds, you're like, whoever directed this movie gets it. And they're yeah. gonna and they're gonna really highlight. Knock it out of the park. Knock it out of the park. I I I, I am looking. I'm looking more forward to this Chris this movie than Christmas, which is but days after it. After yeah, because yeah, yeah, it yeah. comes out like a couple of days before Christmas. So um, definitely, we're gonna keep that on the radar and go see that together for sure. Hell yeah. Um, hey man, we got a lot of great stuff coming up. We've got we've had some great guests over the last little while, and uh, thank you for uh, for being on this journey with us. If you're listening now, we want to thank our title sponsor, Heartbeat Hot Sauce, the heartbeat of the Rockman Power Hour. And uh, we forgot to tell you before, but use our promo code Rockman20 yeah. right there and get you 20% off your entire order. The countdown to Christmas has begun and uh, it makes a great Christmas gift. So uh, nobody I know does not like hot sauce. I don't know anyone who doesn't like hot sauce. I don't know anyone who doesn't like getting hot sauce as a gift. So depends on the temperature, but the heartbeat hot sauce have a large variety, large of temperatures variety. and tastes. So if something's a little too hot. If you are not the type of person that says, I want to bite, I want to, I want to challenge my tongue to a dare, which is me. I like doing that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other people are just like, I just like the taste, but I don't like the bite. They have that too. Heartbeat hot sauce has all your hot sauce needs. So go to heartbeathotsauce.com and use the promo code rockman 20 to be able to provide some Christmas greatness for your friends and family. Love it. Um, and don't forget also that um, we are uh, outfitted by our friends over at Studio House Designs. So thank you to them. Great stuff. Great comfort. I was just thinking the other day when I was in, I was in a hotel somewhere and um, I put on one of my shirts and I know it sounds cheesy, but I was like, I had this moment of gratitude. Where I was just like, I'm just really grateful that we have these awesome t-shirts. Me too. And they're awesome and they're original. And um, I didn't buy them at Walmart. 
Yeah, I call them friend makers. Yeah, you know, as we as we alluded to before, because yes. because it's not just Cody won't just make a shirt based on the coolest trend around. It's like no, he's going to go for those obscure cult followed strange movies. In fact, uh, this is being recorded weeks and weeks after the fact, but they just dropped uh, one for Talk to Me, which is yes. a movie we saw like the North American premiere, premiere. of. And uh, okay. it's so, you know, it, he he makes new movies, but movies at the same time that are like, like talk to me, beautiful and fucking strange <laughs> and awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, on behalf of myself and uh, my co-host, Ryan Stick, I'd like to thank him for being here with me. And thanks to our producer, Julia Kajerski. Thank you to Heartbeat Hot Sauce. Thank you to Studio House Designs and to AKG and uh, all of you for joining us on this journey. Please like, subscribe, uh, and tell your friends about the podcast. Leave us comments. Let us know who you'd like us to talk to and all that great stuff. And we will see you next time on the Rockman Power Hour. Hey, thanks so much for supporting the Rockman Power Hour. We're almost two years strong and we absolutely couldn't do this without your support. So make sure you click on one of these links to find our entire playlist of episodes. And if you haven't subscribed yet, right over there. Hit it and you won't miss anything.